Let's give the Lord some praise. Come on. <laughs> Lift up your voices. Shout to the Lord. For the Lord God is good. He's good and His mercy endure forever and ever. His mercy is anew every single day. If it wasn't for Him, where would we be if it wasn't for the grace of God? What an honor it is to be in the house of God. Can I get an amen, church? Just want to welcome everyone on YouTube, everyone on Facebook. Thank you for being out here on our uh, Sunday service. Man, thank you for blessing the Lord. I'm excited, excited. We have Bishop Charlie Gallegos here today. Praise be to God. Amen. A beautiful man, a beautiful man in spirit, a beautiful man all around. Just uh, good people. You know when you run into good people. Amen. He's good people. And I don't say that about a lot of people because you got to be a good person, man. And you got to know that. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, give me Psalms 121, mijo, that one and two. Just want to open up with this word here real quick. I know that a lot of us come with burdens, a lot of us come with troubles, uh, a lot of us have some heaviness on us and situations we go through, uh, but know that the word is here to help you. The word is here to encourage you, the word's here to build you up, the word of God. If we stay in the word of God, no matter what you go through, your body can have sickness, your marriage can be a mess, your, your kids could be a mess, you know, but you can still have the peace of God. You can still have the joy of the Lord. He's the difference maker. Amen. He's not just the way maker. He's the different maker, difference maker in your life. And here the, the word says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. Beyond those hills comes the help of God. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And that's who we have to depend on. We have to depend on God at all times. We have to trust in God. That's where our faith comes from. Our faith is built up once we trust God, once we know that he is our help and he's needed. We need him. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I need God in my life. Turn to your neighbor and say it. <laughs> Amen. I do. I need God in my life. I believe every one of us needs God. It's, uh, it's good to have Pastor Al back in the house. Amen. Let's give Pastor Al a round of <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Uh, man, what it is. I'm, I can't believe I'm so anxious. I mean, I'm like a little boy right now, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Hey, man. It's good. It's good to be this way. Uh, man, I don't even know what to say. But we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. We're going to get uh, started in our worship. If God, if, if the Spirit of God that's within you tells you come to the altar, come to the altar. There's a reason why he's asking you to come to the altar. You may not even know it, but he has something for you at the altar. There's just something about being at the altar. I received my freedom by going to the altar. I was saved. I was, I, you know, I was delivered and all that. But I yet didn't have the freedom to worship God the way, I, the way I desired to worship God. I desired when I would watch people dance before me, when I would see them jumping up and down, I said, I want to do that. I want to dance before God. I want to jump up and down. I want to run. And it started happening when I went to Pastor Charlie's church where I took off running. Because one time I, I was his armor bearer and I was standing right behind him. And, and uh, God was telling me, run. Run. And I didn't do it. I disobeyed. I didn't run. Because there's 400 people there and you're like, I ain't running. And then Pastor Charlie runs up to the stage. Honestly, I remember the day like it was yesterday. He runs up to the stage. Somebody's supposed to be running right now. And I'm like, oh my God. So I just took off running. <laughs> I knew it was God. So I, there's a freedom in that. There's, there's a freedom in that. And I want you guys to know that. If God says come to the altar and get on your face, forget about who's around you. They don't know your troubles. They don't know what goes on behind closed doors. You know what goes on behind closed doors. So if God says, come, come, God wants to open up your personality. He wants to open up who you are. 
And let's open up ourselves before the Lord and pour out our praise and our worship to him. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you for this day. For this is the day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad. We thank you, Father, that we're invited into your presence. For you are always here, Lord. You never leave us and you never forsake us. You said wherever we go, you will go with us until the end of this age. We believe that. We trust that for this, your word. Father, we thank you for the healing power of your word that will be pronounced and announced today, Lord. We thank you for the deliverance of your word, Father, to deliver people from their past, their pains, your traditions, their religious spirits, Lord, that that would just leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the liberty and the freedom to raise our hands and to shout and dance before you, Lord God. We ask that you heal us, Father, heal our minds, heal our souls, heal our bodies, Lord God. We thank you that we walk with one, Father, you, the spirit of the living God, that we have the mind of Christ, that the spirit of the living God lives within us. So we bless you and we thank you for what's about to happen, Father, what is happening and what will happen, Lord God. We're going to thank you ahead of time. We thank you for the praise and the worship as they lead us, Father, before you, Lord. We thank you that we bow our hearts and we bow our lives to you, Lord. Father, I pray that you bless the man of God, Pastor Charlie Gallegos, Lord, that you bless this man. Did he speak, Father, from the pit of his belly, Father, from the soul's depths of his soul to us, Lord, that as we prayed and we asked and we requested a word from you, Lord, that it come forth today. We thank you and we bless you for every child in the room, Father, for every child that's on their way, that divine protection is over them, Lord. Angels are camped about them. We thank you for every minister that's ministering today. Father, I pray that they will not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, they will reap what they have sown, Lord. We thank you for this house, Turning Point Fellowship. We thank you for the people that are watching us, Father, via Facebook and, and YouTube, Lord, that you bless their homes, you bless their cars, their, their lunch breaks, Father, their lunch rooms, wherever they may be, at the park, Lord God. Wherever they may be, we ask that you bless them and you let them feel the power and experience the power of the living word. We bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful children said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Get our worship. Current, stirring deep inside, it's overflowing 
from the heart of God, the flood of heaven, crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising, bursting, 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 up from the ground, we feel it now, bursting, bursting, up from the ground, we feel it now, we come alive in the river, we come alive in the river. 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 Come on, move those bodies. Move them for Jesus. Break open, Break open prison doors. Set all the captives free. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop the storm. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop the storm. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Bring up a well with me. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well with me. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well with me. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive, we come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive, we come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Spring up a well, spring up 
up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. We come alive in the river. 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 Break open prison doors. Break open prison doors. Let all the captives free. Bring up a well, bring up a well, bring up a well, bring up a well, up a well. Bring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this show. 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 Nothing can stop this joy. Nothing can stop this joy. Nothing can stop this joy. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river.
provide for me. I'm gonna sing, yeah. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. With everything inside of me.
Close your eyes, every one of you. Even you who doubt and disbelieve, close your eyes. And let God just consume you. Let him consume you with his presence. Let him consume you with his love. Allow God to consume you with his holiness right now. Just be still before the Lord. Receive what you need from the Lord right now. Even you children in the back, receive from the Lord right now. Even you teenagers, God's not upset with you. God's not mad at you. God loves you. God wants to bless your life if you allow him to bless your life. God died for the sins of the world, but not everyone will be saved. It's not because of him, it's because of their unbelief. We're to believe in God. We're to believe in his forgiveness, his grace that covers us. And most of all, we're to believe in his love that he loved us unconditionally. And continues to love us. Let him heal you right now. Lay your hands on your belly. On your head. Where, wherever you need healing, just let him know that. He knows it. But you let him know, I need healing, Lord. It's your heart. Heart of pain. Heart of unforgiveness. Heart of hardness. Just release that right now. That you would be open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying.
hear his voice. Hear who he is. Every one of you. Every one of you. Every one of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't be concerned with what people are saying to the Lord. Stay focused. Stay focused. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Don't look at me. I'm no one to look at. Put your eyes on God. Thank you, Lord. Let's just be quiet before the Lord. Be quiet before the Lord. The Lord wants to minister to us. Let him minister to your thoughts, to your heart. He changes your mind. He changes your life. Speak, Lord. Every one of you would take a deep breath and hold it. Just take a deep breath. Hold it for a second or two. Release it real slow. Take one more breath for me. Another one. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it go slowly. You're breathing in the power of God. The consuming fire of God. Breathe in his spirit and just release whatever is not of God. Release it. Because surely the presence of God is here. Thank you for your presence. 
thank you for your healing and your forgiveness, Lord. Most of all, Father, thank you for Jesus the Christ who died on the cross for our sins. He displayed your love, Father, and continue to, to display your love by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Thank you for teaching us and instructing us today, Father. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Father. You don't need to clap. Don't need to clap. We don't always have to clap. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. I want to I teach you guys something just real quick. When the Spirit of God is moving like that, you, you don't have to be, unless you're instructed by the Spirit of God to move around, you, you want to be still in the presence of who he is, his holiness. You don't want to yell. You don't want to clap. You just want his spirit to consume you. And his spirit will change you. The power of his Holy Spirit will change your life today. You can walk out of this place totally different from the way you walked in. Your whole traditions could be changed. Your lifestyle could be changed. Sin could be gone just like that. Just like that out of your life. And you can walk in the holiness of God. But it's up to us to choose. Life or death. The blessings or the cursings. It's up to us. So right now we're going to go ahead and receive our tithe and our offering. Amen. <laughs> They're excited. Tomas is excited. Danny's excited. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. Raise your hand up high like if you're getting free tickets to the Ram game or something like that. Amen. <clears throat> you know, praise God. <laughs> now raise your hands as you give unto the Lord. Get a, a grateful heart. Pass them down. If he gives you two, three, pass them down there. You didn't bring a checkbook. You didn't bring cash. We got you covered. There's a telephone number on the screen, 714-477-7736. Go ahead and hit that number. That's a text number for Share Faith. You hit the prompting, it'll click you over to another page, and you can give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart. And thankful heart. Some of you need to give. Amen. Some of you guys are in a mess financially. You're lacking financially. I'm going to tell you guys the truth. Because you don't give unto God's kingdom. You don't give unto his house. And some of you say, I've got a lot of money in the bank. But you're still not happy. You're still not content. You're still not content. Because we're not just obeying the things of God. Serious. You know, if, if you're looking forward to have God do something in your life. This is the way that we do it. That we surrender our flesh and we let God do what he has to do. Because this is what gets a hold of us is money. And it's not even the money. It's for the love of the money. That we're greedy for money. And we, we got to show God we're not greedy for money. That money's not important to us. God is important to us. Amen. Amen. So give unto the Lord with a grateful heart in Jesus' name. never been defeated. You've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. Through you all things are possible. But you are a supernatural, supernatural God. Supernatural, 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 supernatural God. Supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To him who has no beginning, be all the blessing, all the honor to him who spoke, and it was be all the glory, all the power to him who was and is to come, be all the blessing, 
and Sister Celia, come on up here, and they're going to bless the Lord. Let's see who wants the mic. Oh, Celia wants the mic. No. <laughs> He's giving that to me. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you that we serve a supernatural God. 
that you are the God of the, that makes the impossible possible. Right. And Father, I thank you, O oh Lord, that you do not withhold any good thing from your children. Right. If you provide seeds and food for the, for the birds, Lord, we who are created in your image, you provide everything, yeah, everything. And Lord, I thank you that every seed that has been sown and will be sown in this house will yeah. not be devoured by the enemy. Right. In the name of Jesus, we will not allow the enemy, Father God, to devour our seed. That's in right. Jesus' name, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God that supplies. You are the God of more than enough. And so, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this. Lord, we worship you, we honor you, and we glorify you in our giving. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo! Come on, praise the Lord. Man. Can you uh, just sense the atmosphere that has changed now? Amen. Praise God. You know, just willing and obedience will do that for you. Willing and obedience. We're going to go ahead and uh, our youth are going to stay in today. But our, our kids from, uh, I think, 13 down. We had that pre-class, that 13 down will go ahead and be dismissed. If you want to stay in, you can stay in, kids. But we're going to go ahead and dismiss you. Come on, let's give them a good round of applause. Let's uh, celebrate our children. Because if you don't celebrate them, somebody else will. So give them a good round of applause as they walk by you. Give them a high five. Thank the teachers for the blessing that they are to your children. In Jesus' name, what a blessing these teachers are. We're going to go ahead and release our supernatural worship team in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Man, they did good. Go ahead and take a seat real quick. I'm going to do some quick announcements before we get Pastor Charlie up here. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. We're going to, uh, don't forget that yesterday we had a women's meeting it was out of sight. They told me, they said it was great. <laughs> Sister Pauline Hernandez came out and uh, she blessed the ladies with song and a word, a powerful word. So it was a blessing. Praise God to all you ladies that are showing up. I encourage all you ladies to come out and be part of what Turning Points Fellowship is doing. Amen. You, you got to be part of it. You got to get connected and get in it. You know, that's the only way it works. We can have the best vacuum cleaner in the house. But if it ain't plugged in, it ain't no good. It's, it's, it's got to be plugged in for it to work. And you ladies, you got to get plugged in in order for the word to begin to work in your life. Amen. Amen. Don't forget that uh, we're, uh, September 23rd and 24th, come on, Arise Man Ministry. Come on, praise God. <laughs> Pastor Eric, he's the head of that. He's the founder of it. So uh, we're hosting it on the 23rd here, men. So invite your family, invite your friends. On Friday night, it's open to the wives, the ladies, and men. So on a Friday night, you can come out and hear the word of God. And then on Saturday, it's all just for men on Saturday. But Friday night, it's open. Instead of staying at home and watching TV, doing the same thing, Cindy, every Friday, you know. <laughs> she looks at me. Bring your husband out here, amen. Tell him to come on out and be part of what God is doing in Jesus' name. Because a lot of us do the same thing on Friday nights. We just order a pizza and watch TV, you know. But let's do something different there. So Friday night it's open to everyone. And then Saturday to the men, we have those guest speakers. Don't forget to sign up for Steadfast, the men's conference coming up in November. Come on, amen. Uh, it's filling up. We got a couple of spots. We probably got about 50 spots, 55 spots left. So uh, I encourage you guys to sign up and come on out. Be part of it. It's an awesome time. Uh, it's for 15 years old up, but the 15-year-olds are going to have to be mature. We're not going to be babysitting the 15-year-olds. Don't bring your child if you got to be babysitting them. If they want to stay in the cabinet, just leave them at home. Just don't, don't bring them. That's if they want to come out and they want to be part of it. Some of them just want to come out and go camping. They think it's a camping trip. It ain't a camping trip. It's a Holy Ghost trip. Amen. <laughs> so come on out and be part of that. Uh, see Brother Hugo, Brother Andy, or Brother Fred for sign-ups and the monies. You can drop a deposit down and uh, be part of it. We're, I'm going to open it up probably in about a week. 
I'm going to open it up and invite Pastor Charlie, his church, and start inviting the other churches. We always invite, and whatever men want to come out, come be, it's life-changing. It changes men's lives. It will change their lives. And that's what we have? All right, praise God. So we got everything. Let's all stand to our feet as we welcome Bishop Charlie Gallegos. Come on, from Destiny Church. Come on, let's praise him. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise God. Isn't God good? I mean, look at what he's done. Oh, somebody ought to praise him right about that. My God. I'm going gonna, I, I, I'm gonna to ask for prayer. I believe God's got a, a good word for us. And uh, what do you mean face ID? Oh, yeah. And I believe God's going to do some tremendous things. But here's why, here's why I need prayer. I, uh, this past week I was at a child custody case supporting one of our ladies from church. And they can get pretty ugly. So I was there as a young 13-year-old boy. And so in the midst of all the going back and forth, the judge finally got fed up and he stopped all conversation. Told everybody to be quiet. So he looked at the boy, and at the young boy, and he said, who would you like to live with? Would you like to live with your dad? And the boy said, no. The judge said, why not? He said, my dad beats me. So he says, okay, would you like to live with your mom? And the little boy said, no, sir. He says, why not? He said, my mom beats me. So I looked at the lady, and she goes, pastor, never. Never. So he says, your grandparents are here. Would you like to live with your grandparents? And they said, no, sir. He said, why not? He said, because they beat me too. So the judge said, you don't want to live with your mom. You don't want to live with your dad. You don't want to live with your grandparents. Who do you want to live with? He says, I, I want to live with the Rams because they can't beat the Bills. <laughs> So I thank God for healing power, heal all of <laughs> It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be with your pastor. It's an honor to be in the midst of your presence. It's a greater honor to be in the presence of God, which, is I, which I believe is in this house. So if you've yet to give him the biggest praise this morning, go ahead and do it now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You may be seated. I won't be long, but I did order lunch and it's on its way, so. I want to talk to you a little bit about running with the horses. That scripture was always very interesting to me. And uh, I love that scripture. Once I began to study it, it opened up my eyes to a lot of principles and a lot of truths. And I'm going to ask you if you would kindly really lean in to what I believe the Spirit of God is saying this morning. And if you do, I guarantee you that if that praise and worship didn't change you, the Word of God will. Hallelujah. That was phenomenal praise and worship. Running with the horses. Turn to two or three people and say, the ram's lost, tell them, just tell them the ram. I may not be invited back again, but I'm gonna make the best of it before I leave, hallelujah. <laughs> Turn in everyone and say, running with the horses. We're gonna be in Jeremiah 12. As you turn to Jeremiah 12, there were some people in the tribe of Israel that had become very discouraged and frustrated because life is not going their way. 
They've watched their friends and relatives get freedom from slavery and, and freedom from bondage while they remained in bondage. And they're somewhat frustrated because they've watched some other people do well and they're not doing well. Turn to somebody and ask them, ever been there? And maybe there's someone here who's frustrated because life has just not gone their way. And you've watched other people get promoted and your promotion has still not come. Somebody else has watched their friends move into their new homes and somebody else watched while others got recognized in ministry. Somebody else is frustrated because life just hasn't been what you thought it ought to be. It hasn't been going your way. You are in a similar situation that the children of Israel found themselves in. Frustrated and upset because life is not going their way. As a matter of fact, they're feeling as if God has forgotten about them. You ever feel like God has forgotten about you? That's how they're feeling. They're feeling as if God has forgotten about them. And so Jeremiah goes and, and he talks to them and, and, and they, they give Jeremiah the pastor, say the pastor. They give Jeremiah the pastor the assignment of going and talking to God. Instead of them going and talking to God, they assigned their pastor to go and talk to God on their behalf of these disgruntled group of people. Pastors, you need to be careful when people start doing that to you because what they do is they're gonna pull on you and pull on you and pull on you and they're gonna wear themselves out. Our job is not to direct people to us. Our job is to direct people to God. That was good enough for another offering right there, Pastor. <laughs> so they say, Pastor, will you go talk to God for us? Will you go see what God has to say about all of this? Would you go tell God how we're feeling because of all of this? Pastor, will you go? And in Jeremiah 12, let's go through the first four verses. Let's see what Jeremiah says to God. Number one, verse one. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. And Jeremiah is saying, God, when we come to plead our case with you, you always make the right call. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. And then he says this, yet let me talk to you about your judgments. Oh, okay, God, I love it, Lord. When I can come to you and, and, and talk to you and plead with you, yeah, I love it. Well, why do you love it so much? Because you're, you're always right. You, you know, you, you, you're always right. You're always there with me. And, and, and God says, oh, thank you. He says, but let me talk to you about your judgments. He's telling God, let me talk to you about your judgments. Now, here's he saying, but I'm having some issues with some of your latest decisions, Lord. Then Jeremiah begins to run off a number of questions to God, and he asked, why does the way of the wicked prosper, Lord? Why are the wicked people doing so well? Some of you have felt that way before. You've been upset and frustrated and mad because people that don't go to church aren't thinking about church. They're not trying to live right. They're not trying to do the, 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 the holy thing. And here you are, living for the Lord, the best you know how, in church on Sunday. You're at Bible study and during the week. You're in church on Wednesday. There's a cross, a big cross hanging over your neck. You've got a Bible underneath your arm that weighs about two pounds, a scripture on your T-shirt, and you're praying for tithes, and uh, you're paying your tithe, and you're bringing in your offerings. Hallelujah. And when you get up, when you got up this morning, you walked outside hoping that your car would start <laughs> while your neighbor next door is washing his brand new Mercedes. Somebody might as well tell you the truth, hallelujah. And you say, Lord, what's up with this? What's going on here, Lord? I've got to come out there and hope my car starts and this joker next door who's never seen the inside of a church, he's got a new car and that's what Jeremiah is saying. Lord, why do the wicked prosper? Love you, baby. Why are, why are those uh, happy 
who deal so treacherously, he says. And why, why are the people who are so mean, people who are so nasty, seem to be so happy? Y'all ever meet somebody like that? Uh, look, look to your left and to your right. See if they're sitting in your pew. Go ahead. Look to your left, look to your right. If you don't see them, maybe they're sitting in your chair. Hallelujah, I don't know. Why are those so happy you deal treacherously? Always seem so happy as nasty and mean as they are. They always seem like everything's going their way and yet they treat people like trash, Lord. In the second verse, Jeremiah continues to defend his feelings. He says, you have planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, and they bear fruit, these mean and nasty people. And so here's what Jeremiah is saying. They're where they are because of you, God. They're wondering, and they're doing everything that they're doing because of you, Lord. They're planted, and they're bearing fruit because of you, Lord. How many of you, honestly, how many of you understand that everybody who, uh, who's doing what they're doing, they got there by the mercy of God, whether they love God or not at that moment? You understand that? Mercy is a lot bigger than we think. We, we try to put mercy in a box. Uh, if it wasn't for God's grace and mercy, the Rams would have lost worse than they lost. Didn't they? <laughs> I may not come back, but I'm, I'm going I'm to leave you talking about me when I leave. <laughs> You've planted them. You're the one that set them there. They're prospering as mean, as nasty as they are. They're prospering because you, you're, 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 favorite, you're, you're moving on them and they're nasty and they're mean and they're doing what they're doing. But you did it, God. You planted them there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you haven't answered. You're really gonna make this sermon tough on me today, aren't you? This is the crowd that says, Lord, we don't understand not even that mercy, but notice what he says at the end of verse two. Notice, you are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. Look at your neighbor and go, hmm. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. In other words, this is the crowd that says, we watch these people, Lord, and we recognize that they know how to talk church. Hmm. Like that person you greeted this morning. Greeters. That couple walked in. She said, how are you doing? The husband said, blessed. And the wife said, why don't you tell them how you cussed me out on the way to church? <laughs> tell them they told me to shut the front door. <laughs> but we know how to talk to that Christian. Link. I'm blessed. Yeah. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. We know how to speak the Christianese and, and, and the Christian lingo. And, 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 and so uh, uh, we know how to get around church people. They, they, they know all the right things. Church people know all the right things. You know, you've met some people who have learned how to talk to church talk with other church people, but as soon as church is over, they can flip right over and talk to their friends and talk like unrighteous people talk. He says, Lord, they know how to talk church, but their hearts are far from you. Their minds are far from you. But notice, notice what he says, please, in verse three. Verse three, but you, O oh Lord, know me. Lord, you and I, man, we're like this. Lord, you know me. You've seen me. You've tested my heart towards you. He says, but they, they, Lord, you know me, I don't know about that, but you know me, I'm your BFF, Lord. I'm your boy. You know, you and I, we got it like that, Lord. Then he says this, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. 
Prepare them for the day of slaughter, those mean and nasty people. Now, there's an interesting verse because here he's suggesting to God, take these people out. Lord, you ever pray for God to take somebody out? Oh, man, you're more holy than I thought you were. I, I must be in the wrong church. I pray that sometimes. I, I, I do celebrations. I, I did a celebration a while back with somebody who was very dear to me, very faithful to our church. And, and as I got behind the pulpit, I was looking, and in my heart I was saying, Lord, why him? Why not them? Why not them over there? Why not them? Never mind. I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lord, put them up for slaughter. Can you take, you know what he's saying? Can you take them out and kill them, Lord? These wicked people who are prospering so well, can you just take them out and kill them? Now, now, if you'd be honest, some of you would not be upset if God took some people out. I love somebody say, yeah, and they looked. <laughs> some of you are acting like, like I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know some mean and nasty people, don't you? Yeah. Amen. That you wouldn't, you wouldn't be upset if God decided to take them off the planet of the earth, would you? He suggested to God, go ahead, lead them to the slaughter and kill them, Lord. Kill them. Like the bills kill the rams. Kill them, Lord. Yeah. Somebody shout, kill him. <laughs> I'm trying to get back to the servant. Are you okay? Somebody shout, kill him. Yeah. And the reason he's making, hear me now, hear me. The reason he's making that suggestion is because of the error in his theology. Now you're really going to have to listen to me. There's an error in his theology. Understand that theology is a study of the nature of God. They somehow feel that the blessings that would have come to them have somehow been mistakenly given to the wicked people. And if the truth be told, some of you have the same theology. You think that what God really has for you has somehow landed on the wicked doorsteps and God needs to eliminate them so that you can go get your blessing. But let me tell you something. What God has for you is for you. Those blessings that you, your name is on those blessings. Those blessings are not gonna end up on somebody else's doorstep. Hey, when I shout hey, you shout hey back. Hey. Hey, they're not going to go anywhere. They've got your name on. Ain't nobody going to take what God says is yours. Ain't nobody going to take your joy. Ain't nobody going to take your healing. Ain't nobody going to take your blessing. It's got your name on it. Mm. As a matter of fact, you don't need to be upset, frustrated, or disgusted and mad because of what God gives somebody else. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop it. If God bless your neighbor, it means that he's in the neighborhood, hallelujah. Ah. So instead of being jealous of your neighbor, you ought to be saying, praise the Lord. Because if God blessed that dude, hallelujah. Praise the Lord because if God, if God opened the door for that non-church goer, non-tithe payer, don't know a single scripture, doesn't even go to church, if he did that for them, I can hardly wait to see what it's gonna do for me. Oh, man, somebody ought to stand up and get in your neighbor's face and say, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. Can you say with, uh, can you repeat after me? Can you repeat after me with, with, with a little bit of attitude? How many of you know how to have a little bit of attitude? Only the wives raise their hand. How many of you know how to have a little bit of attitude? 
Here's what I want you to repeat. Lord, I can't wait to see what God got in store for me. I can't wait to see what the breakthrough is. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Now give the Lord a praise and a shout. You have never, you never have to be jealous of what God does for somebody else. So Jeremiah is making a suggestion to kill him. Take them out. And that's his erroneous theology. But then he says in verse four, and here's another part of his theology that's not right. Look at what he says in verse four. How long will the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? The beast birds are consumed for the wickedness of those who dwell there. Now here, 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 Jeremiah is saying, we're going through tough economic times. We're in challenging times, Lord, and it's because of the wickedness of the people who dwell there. I, I, I hear me. He's saying is because of those wicked people. Those that don't go to church, don't pray. He said, All this is happening because, because of those wicked people. Jeremiah has somehow come to the conclusion, you gotta hear me. He's come to the conclusion that judgment falls on the nation because of wicked people. And from the surface, that sounds true. It sounds true. But here's the truth of the matter. God doesn't judge a nation because of the wickedness of wicked people. See, the wicked people can't do anything but be wicked. Oh, come on, help me preach. You gonna help me preach? Wicked people can't do anything but be wicked. The truth is, and here's what the Bible really teaches, God judges a nation not because of the wickedness of the wicked, but because righteous people fall, fail to live righteous. Uh, yeah. I'm from Texas, and when you watch a cow chew something, he'll chew it for a long time, but sooner or later he'll swallow it. I'm just waiting for you to swallow that. It's not the wicked people. They don't know any better. They're wicked people. God gave you as a believer authority over all, everything, over the earth and everything. God gave you the authority. And I believe in my heart that a lot of stuff that's going on is because believers have quit walking in that God-given authority that he gave us back in Genesis. You still love your pastor? I'm not the pastor. I'm talking about him. Man. You see, when God would destroy a city, he said, if I can find, remember this, if I can find 10 righteous people, I'll hold back my judgment. Righteous, not wicked. If I can find 10 righteous people, I'll hold back my judgment. And then he said, if I can find the righteous doing right, God judges the nation, not because of the wicked, but because the people who claim to be righteous, who fail to do right, so they have somehow drawn that conclusion. Hmm. Then they say in verse four, because they said he will not see our final end. Here's what he's saying that they've concluded that God won't see them. So he's pleading his case to God, and after spending four verses pleading his face, uh, his place before God, we come to verse five. Is everybody okay? Are you okay? In verse five, there's a shift. Say shift. There's a shift in verse five. And the shift in verse five is this. God begins to answer Jeremiah now. 
oh, this is going to get good. Now God answers Jeremiah. Now listen to what he says in verse 5. If you have raised, raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? Listen, if you can get a hold of this one truth and this concept, I've, this principle and the truth of this word, I believe it'll transform your life. So here we go. God answers Jeremiah raising a question. And he says to them, if you've been running with footmen and they worn you out, what are you going to do with horses when they come? Let me first of all talk to you about footmen. See, in those days when they had a war, when a nation was going to attack another nation, they would bring their armies to attack and they would first bring, bring of all, bring in thousands and thousands of soldiers that were not trained well if they were trained at all. They would bring these thousands and thousands of untrained soldiers, thousands of them, to attack the nation or the kingdom that they were, they were attacking. And they would bring in hundreds and hundreds of foot soldiers. Listen, foot soldiers, they weren't trained well. They weren't very powerful. They weren't the strongest men. They didn't even have a lot of weapons if they had a weapon at all, these footmen. There were just a lot of them and they would send them in to weed out and thin out the opposing army. They knew that most of them were gonna die. They knew that I'm gonna probably die. I'm not trained. Uh, I, I don't have any weapons. I'm, I'm gonna probably die. They knew that they were gonna get defeated. They didn't expect them to win, the footmen. They were, they, were, they were to just go in and weaken the opposing army's soldiers. And so God is in essence saying to Jeremiah and to the people of Judah that what you're facing is you're facing footmen soldiers. There's a whole lot of them coming at you. As a matter of fact, they're coming at you in swarms. It's one thing after another, one challenge after another, one situation after another, one problem after another. It's a lot, but there isn't much power there. They have no weapons. They are just footmen. They're just footmen soldiers. Yes, they come in swarms but they're there to wear you out. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but there's some people here today who God is calling your problem, this problem that you're crying over, this problem that you're frustrated over, this problem that's making you say, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I don't know why I'm going through this. This is awful. I've never gone through anything like that. This is awful. God is saying, hey, chill out. It's just a footman. It's just a footman. And that's why they come to do exactly what you're doing, to wear you out. But you know, you got to learn how to deal with the footmen because if the footmen are wearing you out, what are you doing when the big horses come in? And it's amazing to me. I've been in ministry, full-time ministry over 40 years. Hear me. It's amazing to me how many times I see a Holy Ghost filled, scripture quoting, Christian, be defeated by a powerless, untrained weaponless footman. No power at all. They're just footmen. They know they're not going to make it back home. They know that they're going to die. They know they're going to get killed. All they got to do is wear you out and prepare the way for the horses. If you can't run with the footmen, what are you going to do when the horses come? Oh. 
Ele dobrou com o Senhor. You got one thing worked out on your job, and before you can finish, breathing, something else comes up. You get through one thing, another issue comes up with your child, or your home, your finances. And here's what God is saying, that their problems were footmen problems. And I've come here to tell somebody that some of what you're facing is nothing more than a footman problem. Gossip and slander, footmen. Didn't recognize me on Facebook, Twitter, or Snapchat, footmen. People talking about you, footmen. Nobody understands you, footmen problems. Lied on, cheated on, mistreated, footmen problems. Fighting the disagreements, footmen problems. Sometimes up and sometimes down. Footman problems. If you can't run with a footman, what are you going to do when the big horses come in? Hey, hey, hey. Being rejected by others, footman problems. Not enough money to pay the bills, footman problems. Husband won't talk to you, footman problems. He won't bring the money home. Footman problems. Wife is not in the mood. Footman problems. Did he say that? Yes, I did. Children won't do right, footmen problems. Struggling in school, footmen problems. Being dishonored, disrespected, footmen problems. Can't agree on things with people in your life, footmen problems. Nobody accepts your ministry, footmen problems. Can't find a job, footmen problems. No promotion on the job that you've got, footmen problems. What you are facing, I'm telling you, is a foot. Man, situation. Can I? Uh, can I uh, now here, now, now here's the thing about footmen. You've got to celebrate them. <laughs> You've got to celebrate footmen. You've got to give God praise for footmen. Why? I'll tell you why. Learn to celebrate and thank God these are footmen things that the Jews and the children of Israel had and God calls them footmen. In essence, he says, don't let the footmen wear you out. Some of you are complaining about your footmen when you ought to be glad that you're still running with the footmen. Don't let footmen knock you out of your position. They don't have the power. They're not trained. Hold your position. They have no authority. Hold your position. Hold your position. Get up and get in your neighbor's face. Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. If I'm preaching to anybody, this is why I'm preaching to you. You're so phenomenal in the things of God. How many times have you heard God called you? You're my handmaiden. And yet it was stuff after stuff after stuff after stuff. Footmen. Footmen. But you ought to, you ought to celebrate the footmen. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're still here. You still have a Bible. You're still reading. You're still praising. You're still worshiping. You're still giving God the glory. Oh, celebrate. You're running with the footman. Get up and give God a praise. Get up and give God a praise. Yes. Hey. 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 Instead of moping and complaining, crying because of this problem, that problem, this challenge after that challenge, this situation after that situation, 
Learn to praise God that you should have lost your mind, but you didn't. You should have lost your praise, but you didn't. You should have lost your worship, but you didn't. You should have quit, but you didn't. You should have had that nervous breakdown with all the stuff that came your way, but you didn't. You should have walked out, but you didn't. And you're still here. Somebody say, I'm still here. And you're still praising. Somebody say, I'm still praising. And you're still shouting. Somebody shout. And you're still dancing. Somebody get up and dance. Hallelujah. And you're still tithing. You're still giving. Get in your neighbor's face and say, watch me, watch me, watch me. I feel the Holy Ghost. 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 Hey, 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 hey. What are you doing? I'm running. I'm running. I'm running with the footman. I'm running with the footman. You've been running with a footman. You've been hanging tough. You've been girding your loins. You've been gaining your strength. And even though it keeps coming, one thing after another, and you feel like it's never going to come to an end, God sent me here this morning to tell somebody to learn to celebrate the fact that you're still here. You're still here. Somebody shout, I'm still here. I shouldn't even be here, but I'm still here. I should have lost my mind, but I'm still here. I should have been in jail, but I'm still here. I'm still here. Somebody shout, I'm still here. Listen, listen, I won't be much longer. I see the runway, so I'm bringing the plane in. Not. Listen, listen, listen. You ought to celebrate that you're running with a footman. Celebrate the footman because footmen, I don't know if you're ready for this. Celebrate the footman because footmen indicate you're headed in the right direction. What you talking about, Willis? I mean, Pastor. What you talking about, Pastor? Listen, 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 listen. The devil, he would never throw obstacles in your way if you're already headed to hell. See, a, a, a smart hunter, a smart hunter doesn't waste ammunition on dead ducks. I thought that was like a million dollar phrase. I said, when I say that, they're going to take another offering. That's what I thought. A smart hunter never wastes ammunition on dead ducks. So the fact that these footmen are coming, the fact that the devil's shooting at you is because you're not dead, you're alive. And you're headed in the right direction. And he don't want you to get there. So he's gonna send the footmen. Hopefully they'll wear you out. Hopefully they'll, they'll, hopefully they'll make you quit. Hopefully they'll make you give up. So he'll send the footmen. Not the horses yet. The fact that you've got one issue after another is a great indication that you're headed towards your destiny. 
You're headed towards fulfilling what God has called you to do. You're headed towards the direction of God's assignment for your life. Yes, the closer you get to where you're going, the more intense the footmen begin to come. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but you better learn how to fight. I said, you better learn how to fight. You need to be saying to yourself, I must be getting close to where I'm supposed to be. I'm getting back in position. I must be in the brink of my breakthrough. I must be on the brink of my healing. I must be on the brink of my miracle. I must be getting close to my destiny, close to achieving all the things that God said that people said I would never achieve. I must be getting close to the place where God has created me to be. Oh, it means, it means that I'm headed in the right direction. Who am I preaching to this morning? The rest of you already know the sermon, right? Who am I preaching to this morning? Must be heading in the right direction. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm heading in the right direction. I'm heading in the right direction. The footman, footman, footman. Tell your neighbor with a little bit of attitude, we'll all, tell him with all of this hell, tell him that I'm going through and all of these battles that I'm having and all of this stuff that's coming my way with all of these letters and all of these bills and all of these phone calls, all of this stuff, all of this stuff trying to take me out. Just watch me. I'm headed in the right direction. Now give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Celebrate the fact that you've got footmen, not only because you're still here, not only because you're going in the right direction, but celebrate because footmen are precursors to horses. Turn to your neighbor and say, turn to your neighbor and say, okay, here we go. They are forerunners for horses. So I've got footmen coming. That means that the soldiers, our horses are coming next. If this is tough, then what's coming next is really going to be tough. I can hear some of y'all saying, well, if it's going to get worse, Pastor, why should I be celebrating? I'm glad you asked that. Because what you're going through now is preparing you for what you're about to go through later. No, 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 no. I can't go past that until you get this. What you're going through now is not to destroy you. What you're going through now is to prepare you for what's coming next. So that when it comes, you're not blindsided. You're not taken by surprise. You've got what it takes. You fought the footman. I'll fight anything else that comes my way. The present trials that you're facing are designed to prepare you for your future. So why should you be so excited, you ask? Well, let me tell you why. Because the greater the trial, the greater the blessing, the greater the battle, the greater the victory. Hey! The bigger, the bigger the giant, the bigger the blessing, the bigger the hell, the greater the breakthrough. Somebody better get ready because what's coming down the pike that you're going to face means that when you get to the other side, you're going to have a huge blessing, bigger, bigger than you can think, bigger than you can imagine. Get, get in your neighbor's face and tell them that my blessing, my blessing, my blessing. If you only knew, 
if you only knew, if you only knew where God was about to take you, you'd stop complaining. You would stop crying. You'd learn to lift your hands and say, God is about to do something great in my life. See, right there, somebody ought to give the Lord a shout right there. Somebody ought to shout, I'm going somewhere. I'm about to achieve something. I'm about to accomplish something incredible. I never dreamed of this. But all the stuff that's coming at me, all the drama, all the pain, the anxiety and trouble means only one thing. One thing, neighbor. Only one thing. I'm about to step into something huge. Footmen, 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 footmen. Ah. Uh, remember, Joseph, turn to your neighbor and say, you know the story. Joseph had, had to be rejected by his brothers, sold into slavery, lied on by his boss's wife, cast into jail by his boss, and forgotten by his cellmates. He had to go through all of that just so that he could be the number two man in all of Egypt. He had to go through all that hell. He had to go from the pit to the palace, somebody, somebody, somebody here better get ready because you're going to go today, today, you're going to go from the pit to the palace. Tell, tell your neighbor, I'm on my way. Tell him I'm on my way. Tell him I'm on my way. Watch me, watch me. Daniel had to be thrown into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Albondigas had to go through the fiery furnace. <laughs> Listen to this. The woman who had the issue of blood carried that condition for 12 years, spent all her money going to doctor after doctor. Nobody could heal her. She was sick and sick for 12 years. And then when Jesus came through town, listen to what she did. She touched the hem of his garment. She had to go through 12 doctors, 12 footmen, 12 doctors to get the hem of his garment. And here's what's huge. Because when she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus stopped everything that was going on. Women, listen. He stopped everything that was going on and said, somebody has touched me. Listen, ladies, listen. Somebody has touched me. Now, I know you all didn't shout right there because you all don't know what that means. So listen to this. Back in that day, women were not considered people. They were basically considered property. Jesus gave her status. He gave her status because he didn't say something touched me. He said, someone touched me. And Jesus had to be crucified, buried, footmen. Crucifixion, footmen. Buried, footmen. He had to be crucified and buried in order to be resurrected. You've got to go through something. The thing thing with this generation is that we don't want to deal with anything. We want to be warned before we go through the challenge. And I've come here to tell you that you have to go through something before you get to where you're going. Turn to somebody, lady, turn to somebody and say, suck it up, boyfriend. Men, turn to somebody, to a lady and say, suck it up, girlfriend. Gird up your lions, your loins. Gird them up. 
Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself. Make up your mind. I'm not quitting. I'm not crying. I'm not walking away. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, Now that's the footman. Uh, But can I talk to you about the horses for a second? Because the horses are coming. Horses are strong. They're fast and can endure long distances. A horse can run at full speed for several miles and horses can run in the heat and in the cold. Horses rest while they're standing up. Now let me break it down for you. God is gonna give you the ability right now. Somebody say right now. Somebody say this morning. Somebody say in this church. God's going to give you the ability right now in the midst of where you are to be stronger than a horse. You're going to be faster than the horse and you're going to endure longer than a horse endures. He's going to give you the ability to run in the heat and in the cold when it's going well and when it's not going well. And he's going to give you the ability to rest while you're standing. Let's go back to verse five, please. You have raced with the footmen or the men on foot and they have worn you out. How can you compete with horses? Now, here's something that God's God's trying to say to us. He wants to make us understand this. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, in the normal situations, if you put a man up against a horse, The man will never outrun a horse. Look at your neighbor and go, duh. (laughs) That man will never outrun a horse. That man cannot outlast a horse. We cannot compete with horses. But this verse, this verse implies that it is God's expectation for you to contend with the horse. And God is saying, in the natural, you can't compete with the horse. In the natural, you cannot outrun the horse. In the natural, you cannot outlast the horse. But God says this, I'm gonna give you supernaturally the ability to do what you cannot do in the natural. So my assignment this morning is to tell you that God is gonna give you power to do supernaturally by his strength, with his anointing, what you cannot do on your own strength and ability. If you receive that, say, you're preaching real good, Bishop Tom. So don't be discouraged. Don't quit. Don't get mad or upset because God's gonna help you supernaturally to do that which you cannot do in your own power and your own mind. It's not by your might, nor is it by your power. It will always be by my spirit, says God. Okay, let me give you a little bit of my testimony and maybe I'll help you better understand. Here I am, Charlie Gallegos. I am pastoring the Destiny Community Church International in Whittier. I do not have, I do not to God be the glory, I do not have a seminary degree. I do have a BA. Every once in a while I get a bad attitude, but I don't have, I don't have a seminary degree. I do not have a bachelor's degree. I am unqualified to be where I am naturally, so God gave me supernatural abilities. I'm not qualified to be where I am, but God gave me supernatural abilities. To do what? God gave you the ability to do what? Hey! 
For sure, I thought somebody ought to run. No, 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 no. But remember? I thought you'd run. I really did. So that you could give glory to God. God's given you a supernatural ability that no matter how big the horse is, no matter how powerful the horse is, the Bible didn't say the horses are coming to defeat you. God said you're going to contend. You're going to keep up with them. They're not going to overrun you. They're not going to outdo you. You're going to contend. You're going to deal with it. You're going to be side by side with them. Don't let the footmen wear you out because you're going to be able to run with those horses. Now somebody get up and run. Somebody get up and run. 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 It'll free you up. It'll free you up. It'll bring healing. It'll bring deliverance. It'll bring a miracle. Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Oh. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Now for sure you're not gonna want me to come back. Because some of you are sitting there saying, this is silly. Does it really take all of that? Do you know their story? Huh? You know their story? Have you ever asked them to tell you their story? Huh? What God brought them out through? How they almost died? How where they had no help? And they thought it was all over? And all of a sudden God moved? And God gave a miracle then? And now if you're able to run, God will give you a miracle now? It's not as silly as you think, bro. It is not as silly as you think. What you saw these people do is now funny or silly, what you saw them do, they just shared your testimony with you. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Look at me run. I ran in Mexico. I ran in Colombia with the gospel. I ran in New York to preach the gospel. I ran in Spain. I put spin. I ran in spin. I ran in Spain with the gospel. I ran in New Mexico. I ran in Texas. And in Whittier, the Destiny Community Church. And people come to hear me preach. Come, people come to hear me preach. You know why? You know why? I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Who's going to run with me? I'm running. I'm strong. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you may not have me back, but I'm gonna be, you're gonna be talking about me when I leave. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it seems funny. It looks funny. I played a lot of football. A lot of football. To play football. I was in the varsity as a freshman, bro. Middle linebacker, homie. Pull the bro. <laughs> hey, bro. To the center. What? You hear what they're saying about your mom? Bro, it's get in their head. And I was doing ups and downs. You know what ups and downs are? Okay, who's preaching? Me or you? That's my daughter, by the way. That's my daughter, Alicia. That's my precious wife of soon to be 49 years. 
That's our pastor, Pastor Richard. Hallelujah, that's our pastor. Pastor John Paul and his precious wife, Maria. So they're doing the drill. I'm doing that drill, right? Coach got a whistle, you know, running place. Blows a whistle, bam, you go down, get up again. Something the Rams didn't know how to do, never mind. So you're right. <laughs> Boop, bam, you get up. Boop, bam, you get up, running place. Coach walked up to him one day and said, he said, sir, coach, he says, you know why we're doing this drill? Oh, conditioning, coach. No, he goes, let me tell you why we're doing this drill. We're doing this drill, Gallegos. This is my football coach, bro. Not my dad. My football coach. I didn't have a good dad. My football coach says, Gallegos, in life, it's going to knock you down. And when it does, you better hurry up and get your butt back up in empty position. And it knocks you down, you better get up and get in position. And it knocks you down, you better get up and run in place. You better get up and stay in possession. You better get up. That's a footman. That's a footman. Oh, here come the horses. Oh, my God, here they come. Oh, here we go. Here we go. How did my iPad get wet? Who have I been preaching to this morning? Who has the Holy Ghost preached this morning? Turn to your neighbor and say, no more tears. Say, no more crying. No more complaining. No more being ashamed. No more being afraid. Rise up, O oh children of God. The horses are coming, and God is going to give you power to run with the horses. Run with the horses. I feel the anointing in this house. If you want the ability to run, I feel that I want to lay my hands on you. Run, run up here. Run up here. Run up here. Got some music or, or run up here. Run up here. Got it. Run up here. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to go quick. Time's out. Time's out. I'm going to go quick. I'm going to go quick. Ready? Ready? In the name of Jesus. Run. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name that is above every day. Run. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name of Jesus. God is so good to you. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name. In the name. It's going to be good. It's been a long time. It's over. It's going to be good. We're just wait and see. Ah, the bliss is. It's going to be good. Put your hand on It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the bliss is. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Oh, God is good. He gets all the glory. Uh, for some of you religious folks in the house, he said, uh, you guys think this is silly. For some of you it is. But remember when Jesus spit on the, some dirt and made some dirt and he put it on the blind man he told the blind man to go wash it out to the religious folks that was silly in those times 
that was silly. When the lady with the issue of blood, 12 years, uh, went to go touch the hem of the garment, her friends were talking her out of it because it was against the law. Don't do that. For some of them, it was silly. But she did it anyway. And if you did what the Lord asked you to do, you got your freedom today. You get to run with the horses. It's a beautiful word he gave. It's not silly. Pastor done that. I've ran. And God set me free. He got rid of a lot of hang-ups I had. A lot of self-pride. A lot of selfishness. And God began to work in my life and bless my life. And my life changed. I'm free. I'm free today because I ran. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And for you who didn't do what God asked you to do, I don't know what he asked you to do. You're going to be hung up with those things for a little while longer. But today, as he laid hands on you by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by might nor by power of a man, but by the Spirit of God, your life changed. And there's some of you that have never even come to the altar or raised your hands or bowed before God. Today's your day. Today's the day. God has ministered to you in song and worship and praise. God is always ministering to us by his, by his spirit. By his spirit. Just receive what the, what the Lord is saying. Because you don't understand God's ways. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts higher than ours. God does some stuff, man. It'll, <laughs> it'll blow your mind if you would just listen and do it. He'll change your life. I was a foolish man, and God changed my life because I listened to him. He gave a beautiful word. Even before he said the last part of it, running with the horses, I had wrote down a note that the footmen prepare you to run with the horses. And the weapons you take from those footmen, whatever weapons they had in their hand, if they had any, you defeat those. Those weapons are given to you to defeat the horses. So today you're leaving with power. You're living with a, a new voice, a new mind, a new set. And don't pick it up. Don't pick up your old ways. Leave it alone. Let it go. God wants to change your life. As much as you want to change your life and you can't because you're not letting God do it. We're trying to do it ourselves. It doesn't work that way. It has to be done by the Spirit of God. It has to. You guys have done well. You have done well today. We're not done. But the Lord is doing something. Sophie, you are not here by accident to this church. I can just even see it in your face what God is doing. The joy, the smile. Ya no estás toda aguitada. Estás alegre y se ve en la cara. Paul told the Corinthians he wished it he could die for them but he can and as pastor myself I wish I could take things for you but I can't you got to take it for yourself and you got to grow up you got to mature Father I thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon this house Thank you for the man of God that you have sent to our house to bless us, to honor us with your word. 
I thank you that he did study to show himself approved unto you, Father, rightly dividing the word from the soul to the spirit, Lord God. He has spoken the truth. You have guided his tongue, Father. You have guided his mind. You have instructed him and he followed. So I thank you for the blessings that follow the word. Follow the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Signs, wonders, and miracles, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. For there is no one and nothing that deserves it but you alone. I thank you for the healing that's taking place right now in these lives. I thank you for the strength that they have outlasted the footmen. And they're ready to run with the horses, Lord God. They're ready to contend with them, Lord. For they have overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They have testified in their actions and their attitude that you are good, Lord, and you're worthy. Continue, Father, to love on your people. Continue to bless them. Bless the house of destiny there in Whittier, Lord God. Overtake them. Overflood them, Lord God, with your word and your spirit. Let that spirit, Father, run throughout their hallways and throughout their pews and their chairs and their classrooms, Lord God. Your spirit. A spirit of deliverance, Lord. A spirit of power. A spirit of love and a sound mind, Lord. Let it fill that house of destiny, Lord, as it fills this house of Turning Point Fellowship. We honor and we bow our hearts and our lives to you, Father. For great are you, Lord. Great Never been here before, Frankie. You've never been here before. In the spirit, you're about to enter in. It's a new level, new realm.